It's time for bonus points, where we get 30 seconds to rattle on about impressions, etc., of games we either recently played or are currently playing before Mario dies, and we shut up and move on. All right, I started playing Axiom Verge. I very much liked it. It's, as everyone said, it's basically Metroidvania. I actually called it Controid. Contra plus Metroid, that is. Level design is really excellent. You know, you unlock items and then find hidden rooms. Uh, the one guy, impressed me, one guy took five years, but he did everything. He did the programming, the music even, and the soundtrack is great. So I very, it was on sale on PSN and I picked it up and I it was worth every penny that I paid for it. It's a great retro game. I highly recommend it. Check it out. I played uh, Tesla Grad recently, and um, really cool game, uh, very interesting style. Uh, you kind of go through and you get a bunch of different uh, powers as you go through based on things that you're wearing. Um, the art is great, very stylized. The story is told through uh, through the art. There's no dialogue or anything like that. Uh, the puzzles are pretty difficult. Um, the boss fights are really interesting, uh, kind of a strange way to go through them. <laughs> I finally got around to playing Bioshock Infinite, and I immediately, as much as I enjoyed the first Bioshock, this is definitely an upgrade narrative-wise. Having a main character who actually reacts to his environment around him, it makes it far more immersive, and playing on uh, the hardest difficulty, 1999 mode, and it's very, very well done. The enemies are difficult, but you're much weaker, so it feels more organic than hard, uh, other hard modes there, exi- there are. And I also played Bastion. Um, this game was pretty good too. It was, um, you know, available for a while, but I finally got it on PS4. And it's kind of trippy. I like to describe it as it's got like a very cool visual style. Everything's like floating in midair, so I always like that. I'm always a kind of a sucker for that sort of visual. And again, had a great progression system. Had a very nice narration. Like you would get comments on things. You'd, I fell off a ledge, and the guy was like, "Then he fell to his death." Just kidding. Like it was a little, it was humorous in that way, and also a great one. So check it out as well. Uh, I also played Retro City Rampage. Uh, this is just a crazy ass um, satire of the original first two GTA type games, uh, top down um, type of gameplay. Uh, they have a bunch of references to old school stuff. Uh, there's a Back to the Future reference fairly early on. I haven't gotten all the way through it yet, but you know you kind of just go back in time, uh, just murder a lot of people and. They have a lot of fun. I played Aptheon, which is sort of a Greek-based, like, Grecian urn-style visual. Yes, like, sort of, you know, you're going to Mount Olympus, sort of every Greek myth, like God of War light almost. But it's got a good uh, little side-scroller feel to it, good mechanics. Again, good upgrade, good item system. Um, and the visual style is, like, not, not something you see every day. So, you know, this group of indie games, um, I think they all did a good job, and I recommend them all. I also played Stealth Inc. Uh, as far as the puzzles in this game, it's a puzzle game, and as far as the puzzles go, it's it's pretty good. Uh, you have really no connection to your uh, protagonist, who's just a clone and completely, you know, faceless as far as that goes. Um, has a couple good mechanics. Uh, one of the big ones is your eyes turn red when you're seen, and you're, they're green when you're unseen, and that's you know that's basically it. And this isn't much of a review as kind of suggestion to the Call of Duty franchise. If things start getting stale, perhaps they can uh, think of uh, Call of Duty uh, Catch-22 or Call of Duty um, For Whom the Bell Tolls, Call of Duty uh, Farewell to Arms. I mean, yes, you, you're glorifying warfare, but I think it would be a nice turn to start you know, subverting it and really discussing the ramifications of it. So uh, feel free to take my advice. Thank you as always for listening, and we will see you next time. Music by Stephen Armosi. Editing and engineering by Chris Morgan. Syntax Error is part of a Lost Signals Productions. All rights reserved.